Hey guys, Rex here. I am just sitting here in my Eclipse Monitoring Apocalypse Center with my tennis rackets ready to smack down all the locusts that are going to come out of the New Madrid fault line because they turned on CERN during the Eclipse. Remember guys? You guys have a memory longer than the goldfish? Didn't you hear everyone talking about all this stuff? So we're sitting here waiting for the uh, earthquake. Let me just refresh it again real quick. I'm going to refresh the map. Well, shist. The last 25 hours have been pretty quiet, abnormally quiet, and the well, normally quiet in the Western Hemisphere. Not a lot going on. Normally, there's a lot more going on than this map. I was hoping for at least someone's chandelier to be shaken here near the New Madrid fault line. I know there was an earthquake over here in New Jersey. I heard about that. A dog was barking at the window I saw on that video. And the Statue of Liberty wiggled, right? That's probably the apocalypse, right, guys? I remember that in the Bible. There shall be a minor earthquake in a diverse place. A dog shall bark at the window. And a lady will get up confused asking, what was that slight wiggle? Yeah, I remember that right in the Bible, guys. You guys, do you have a goldfish longer than a memory? The eclipse is now over. Where's uh, the New Madrid fault line opening up with the locusts coming out? I need locusts. What else do we need? We should whiteboard this. You guys want to whiteboard this? You ever hear of this thing called accountability and pressure? When you have prophets running around, yelling out stuff that's supposed to happen, write it down, screenshot it. If they have a specific time-related prophecy... And there, see, there's a difference between prophesying what God wrote, like he wrote certain stuff will come to pass. You can say that because that's what he said. You can repeat what he said. But if you're having dreams, man, if you're having dreams where God spoke to you and you have the gall to say, well, God spoke to me and gave me a dream about how this is going to happen. Okay. So what's on our list of stuff that's supposed to happen, guys? Um, the locusts. I was excited about that one. So let's make check boxes. Locusts, okay? What else were we supposed to have? Earthquake. Was like a 9.0 plus. Supposed to pl uh, split apart the New Madrid. Right? Remember that? Because it's on the, the Ozarks where the Tav was, where the X marks the spot, where the big cross, you know, was made on the United States, um, World War III. So we'll check CNN in a minute. But I'm close enough to where World War III would actually happen. I did not see it happen yet. Okay, what else are we waiting for? What else did we hear about it with the eclipse? Oh, CERN. They spun up CERN, Rex. Yeah, CERN is always spun up all summer. They, sp they spin it up every spring. Okay, so CERN is supposed to release Abaddon. I can't spell the Abaddon. Abaddon or whatever, right? Okay. Um, now, I know that that will happen. And I do know that there will be locusts or something like that, according to Revelation. I know that Yeshua did talk about an earthquake right, before he comes back, that'll shake all the mountains to their low places. By the way, guys, if you're thinking it's prophecy because someone's uh, chandeliers in New Jersey wiggled enough for them to get uh, a security photo of it. You know, I was watching CNN, and they had an expert on there who was a PhD who heard, according to his live interview on CNN, you know, I heard that there it, w it was actually large enough of an earthquake to where some people actually saw their chandeliers moving. I'm like, oh, geez, that's a... It's the freaking apocalypse! The chandelier. We heard a guy had a chandelier move. It's the apocalypse. Dude, I've been in earthquakes when I lived in Montana bigger than that. Okay, so we have CERN. Locusts, earthquake, World War III CERN. What else was there? Um, oh, the Devil's Kitchen. The Devil's Kitchen. Reporting live. He's making a salami. Okay. So it wasn't something supposed to happen. It was also the Nineveh situation, right? Some major prophetic 
fulfillment of the Nineveh prophecies. I've seen a lot of different, since I heard about this, when I would see it pop up, I would check it to see what the temperature check is, because guess what our job is? Our job is to execute filters. You might have noticed that before I wiped off the whiteboard. Filters. We are instructed in the Bible according to the law. Deuteronomy 18, Ezekiel 22, Mark 13, Matthew 7, Matthew uh, 24, Jeremiah 14, Jeremiah 5, 2 Timothy. All over in the Bible we're told to watch out for people that are prophesying in his name where they say, the Lord told me this stuff is going to happen with the eclipse. And we're supposed to keep track of it and then execute proper righteous judgment. Now, in the old days in the land, there was a very serious judgment for prophesying falsely, especially if you led people to disobedience, which was what a lot of people are doing. Some people are trying to sort of lead people towards obedience, but now they're misrepresenting the whole system of obedience when they pull stuff out of their rear end. When you say the Lord told me something and you're bearing false witness, man, you better be careful, right? I got to be careful too. And a simple lawyer's trick caveat in like a 30-second subtext deal or whatever on the hidden in the back of the video saying, well, I'm not saying any of this is going to happen. Hold on a minute here. You can't use lawyer's tricks to try to have a clause, a weasel clause, to get out of everything you're saying. We have to read the book, okay? So I'm still waiting for this stuff to happen. What else was supposed to happen during the uh, the eclipse? Oh, the red heifers, that's right. Because, like, all the YouTube Christian Bible expert guys are talking about red heifers because they totally understand that. Even the convening of the guys over there trying to train the Kohen still are trying to figure out the legalities for doing this appropriately. They got a little ways to go before they can do that. They're still trying to figure out how this even works because it's been lost for so long in the political situation. But yeah, it doesn't matter. Some guy in his imagination caught part of the news that they started a red heifer breeding program in Israel. And now the eclipse says there's going to be red heifers. Guess what these guys are inadvertently causing, by the way? This will cause this. When you go off half-cocked, speaking out of your rear end on stuff you don't know about, you are causing a war. What do you think Hamas is all spun up about right now? So it's part of their excuse. Why? Because people go online with no clue just saying random stuff that is extremely incendiary with zero clue. Well, why do you think they get it? They're just going to get them and not do it. They're trying to breed them. They have to inspect it at the time of the killing of that heifer to make sure every hair is red. They're trying to breed something that'll work. Maybe those ones will work. We'll see. Well, they inspected them. Yeah, do you know anything about cattle? Then shut up. So the red heifers, locusts, earthquake, World War III, CERN, Devil's Kitchen, <laughs> Nineveh, because there's like a very prophetic path it took, right? So that stuff is, well, Rex, it, it, that just means it's the start of invisible prophetic events. Oh, I've heard that one before. Invisible prophetic events. You mean like this kind of business? Like the Millerites in 1844? They piped, oh, Jesus is certainly coming on October, whatever, 1844. Huge movement in the United States before the Civil War times. And 1844, the exact date comes around. They're all standing there looking at the, you know, the sky. And nothing happens. So what happens? Okay, so a bunch of people snap out of it and go, apparently that guy was wrong. Apparently that guy and his time prophecies were incorrect, okay? But some people went rogue. No, it was invisible. He's actually here now. So now we're in the kingdom age. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense since World War I and World War II and freaking all the horrific stuff going on and the abortions and everything. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. He's here just ruling in the kingdom age. And then other people are like, no, he's in his secret place. He's in the heaven's invisible sanctuary. Well, maybe, but like the genesis of this date was obvious in the entire... At what point do people start logging things? Why am I enthusiastic in this message? Well, Rex, you seem kind of negative there. Um, do you know what the do you know what the consequences for being a false prophet are? I'm not being a little ridiculous. I'm being extremely loving. I could read the Bible, you know. You want to read the Bible? No, that's too scary. It's just too scary for everyone. Okay, so let's look at this for a minute, and then we'll maybe come back. So let's zoom in a little bit. So we're looking here. This is the earthquakes. Let's refresh, guys. Was there the big 10.0 or whatever, the 9.0? That the, the earthquake that was prophesied in Revelation, did that happen here? Okay, well, let's maybe check CNN. Maybe CNN is my source of biblical fulfillment, right? Because any time you come up with a harebrained idea and it starts to look like it's probably not going to come to pass, we got to go rogue. We got to go like way out in left field, man. We got to like search for something. So, okay, well, if there was grasshoppers coming out of the ground biting everyone in a giant earthquake hole because CERN opened up a, a thing, you think someone would notice. Now, I know the news is not 100% on board, right? So how about let's go Google News. Google News. How about that? Okay, so let's go here. All right, what do we got? Now we can type in specific things. How about um, locusts? Because there's got to be a... No right. Any locusts coming out of anywhere today? Hmm. Am, I in, am I on the wrong thing now? How about um, red heifer? Holy wars, red cows, Gaza, and the end of the world. Man, that stuff sells good, doesn't it? Well, I'm not seeing anything about the red heifers causing World War III today. But Rex, it could cause World War III sometime this year. Well, if that's the way we're rolling, guys, I'm Rex. I had a dream that eventually there'll be a war, and when it comes to pass, if there's an earthquake anywhere in the Eastern Hemisphere on the Ring of Fire, within that six months, that proves that I'm a prophet. You guys are smoking crack. You don't understand the, the filters. This is all biblical. All right, so let's read some stuff here. Deuteronomy 18, uh, 20 through 22. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods is to be put to death. You may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by Yehovah? What if a prophet proclaims in the name of Yehovah does not take place or true? What if that thing does not take place that is true? Well, that message is not what he spoke, and that prophet has spoken presumptuously. You shall not respect him. Okay, Ezekiel, that's the super nice version. So if one of his people starts just talking out of order, imagining in their brain that they're a prophet, after that point, you cannot, the word is fear him. That means you cannot respect him. He needs to be quiet and shut his mouth and sit in the back of the church or listen to someone else's Bible study. He is no longer qualified to talk on anything. Okay. He's making specific time prophecies where he thinks and imagines that God specifically told him about how the earthquake's going to crack open or all the stuff's going to go down. It doesn't happen. He needs to be quiet. That's how he deals with his people um, in, if they're talking out of turn. If they're leading people to disobedience, like if the point of the prophecy is to tear down the law or support some kind of doctrine that leads to disobedience, then they get the ultimate punishment. Now, if that would be if we're in the land, so the maximum punishment that is allowable within the land that you're in, okay? Which, in America, First Amendment clause, kick them out of your circles. Ezekiel 22, her prophets whitewash these deeds for them by false visions 
and lying divinations. They say, this is what the sovereign Yahovah says. When Yahovah has not spoken. Mark 13, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and even wonders to deceive people, if it were possible, even the elect. So at some point, guys, some of this stuff might actually appear to happen. That doesn't mean it's a true prophet because they will be empowered to perform signs and wonders. This is in the Bible. They are actually empowered to do that, to test you. That's in the Old Testament as well. It's repeated in the Gospels. God literally is sending you a test to see if you want to follow him or if you want to follow signs and wonders. So even if this stuff would come true, what is the guy's conclusion on what we are to do? If it's anything different besides repenting and turning back to his word, then he's out of whack. Okay. Watch out for false prophets, Matthew 7, 15. They will come to you in sheep's clothing. They're going to want to look like one of you. There's Torah guys that are false prophets, lots of them. There's Christians that are false prophets, most of them. There's all sorts of guys in various cults and stuff like that that are just always talking out of turn. Okay, Man, I'll tell you what. Anytime I talk on something that I think is going down or that maybe something is hidden in the text, right? I point to the text as the ultimate authority. Just as a general standard operating procedure, I cannot venture outside what the word actually says. There are things in the text of the word that will come to pass. So I might repeat those things, but that's not me coming up with it. That's the difference. You're fine to preach what's in there as prophecy. You're fine to preach the law. Anyone can repeat the orders. We all have orders from the Most High in the Word. Anyone at any rank can repeat those orders verbatim. But when you start trying to reinterpret that and have a new conclusion on what we're supposed to do, now you're in big, big, big trouble. Okay? Jeremiah 14 then the Lord said to me, the prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them nor appointed them uh, or have spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and delusions of their own mind. Be careful, guys, and I'm saying this in love, be careful not to make connections that are not there. If it's overtly in the text, okay, and it points to him and what his word already said to do, that's fine. So you can dive into the text and see the nitty gritty and the subtleties and all the beauty and the depth of his word. You can tear apart a word and be like, wow. Or you can tear apart a concept or a story, look at it from a multitude of angles and have revelations concerning his word that lead to obedience to him that are of the word. But when you start, when you start looking up CERN, that's not in his word, man. Now, I know that there are circumstances. That probably is the bottomless pit. Who knows? But you, I mean, we got to be careful. We can, we can visit about these things. But when you come out there and say, God gave me a vision, had a dream that this, 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 this is all going down. Man, when that stuff does not come to pass, you guys have to log that. Okay, right? what else do we got here? Deuteronomy 13. It is Yehovah, your God, you must follow and you must revere him. Keep his commandments and obey him. Serve him and fold, uh, hold fast to him. That prophet or dreamer must be put to death for inciting rebellion against the yod heh your God, who brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you to, from the land of slavery. That prophet or dreamer tried to turn you away from the Lord your God commanded you to follow. From the law, turn you away from the law that he told you to follow. You must purge the evil out from among you. Even if your own brother, your daughter, your wife that you love, your closest friend secretly entices you, saying, let us go and worship other gods. Gods neither you nor your ancestors have known gods of the peoples around you, whether near or far from one end of the land to the other. Do not yield to them or listen to them. Show them no pity. Do not spare them or yield them. They must certainly be 
Now that, again, is the punishment that was issued in the land. We do not do that here. It's not lawful for us to do that. We're not in the land, okay? But what is the maximum, what is the maximum, that's the maximum penalty. You have to get those guys out of your circles. So where's the, um, I don't know, we could probably type in World War III news. World War III, how about that? I mean, we all know we're on the brink of World War III, but we have been since we were born. This is what happens when you smoke the pipe smoke. Then you got to go rogue and start searching for stuff. So, locusts, green check mark for yes or red X for no, okay? So if it did happen, we're going to put a green check mark in it. If it did not happen, as prophesied by these guys, we're going to put a red X through it. Locusts. I'm looking at my yard right now. I don't see any locusts attacking anybody, nor did I see that be a thing. Now, if next week there's a 3% increase in the locust population and it's all over on the news, just because it's all over on your Babylonian rectangle of death, that's the, what you guys don't get. Just because you see locusts on here all the time because people are smoking the crack and excited about locusts does not mean there's actually a real locust increase. Right? Where's the 9.0 New Madrid fault line earthquake? Or the one that uh, puts every... Did you read the Bible? It says it's going to put every building to the ground, all the mountains, everything shall be made flat. I would have felt that one. World War III? I'm looking straight at a primary target right now. It's still there. I did not see... I mean, it wouldn't affect me. Um, I would see it. <laughs> I would absolutely see it. And if I was looking straight at it without the trees in the way, I might be blind. Okay. CERN. Did it release the monsters? Well, I've seen that Stephen King movie, and I don't have any of those giant octopuses trying to pull me out through the garage door. That hasn't happened yet. Devil's Kitchen in Nineveh? Now, I don't even know what the hell that was. That one's just funny. That's just, we'll give that one to him. Because the Devil's Kitchen and the earthquake did probably go past within a thousand miles of a town called Nineveh. Or several. Dude, you can look on a map and find... All, if, if you want to tell any story. If you want to have a prophecy about rabbits. You can look on a map when there's an earthquake and find something about a rabbit within the close enough range. Or, you know what I'm saying? You can make stuff be there that's not there. Red heifers? Yeah, those heifers have been there for a while. Did they burn them up today? No. But Rex, what if it's next week? You see, God gets all his bullets in the same hole with his timing is perfect. That's how the Gospels played out. The timing with the execution of the Gospels and how they were fulfilled to fulfill the spring feasts were exactly to the date and hour and probably to the second. But we can know from history God's time prophecies, like when they're going to come back into the land, are to the day and hour with perfect precision, perfect timing. God is not a bumble klutz like we are. Yahovah is not a bumble klutz. If he says he's going to do something on a certain time, he's going to do it. So like, well, I gave myself four, four years of lateral. Well, for okay red heifers all right so what do we got so okay there's a devil's so the guy found devil's kitchen on the map so what do we got to do what's the solution you guys have to have to execute filters deal with harshly infiltrators liars that's the crime you need to filter. Time wasters. Was anyone's time wasted? My time was wasted trying to figure out what everyone was excited about because my job is to try to help people. Ego-driven emoters. Were people emotional about this? So it was the guys talking about this ego-driven because they get a lot of views when you start talking about how there's going to be an eclipse next week that's going to release freaking locusts from the CERN reactor. 
the the space, you know, the Eisen, the 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 uh, what do they call it? Uh, the Einstein Rosenberg Bridge or whatever, right? Like, first off, these guys ain't phys physicists. I it's almost cringeworthy to hear them talk about physics. Okay, liars, time wasters, ego driven emotors. They're not fact driven guys, so they're ego driven. This four channel views, retards. Okay, the CERN thing, man, I mean, that's entertaining, but that's what we do when we're like a baby in the faith. We're all excited. We watch all the crack videos. Um, if you're watching CERN videos, but you're not sure how to execute God's commandments relating to his feast yet, then you're retarded. Okay, because we need to have priorities, guys. You're an expert on everything except what he actually commanded. That's not cool. Okay, how about this one? Now, I, the devil's kitchen. Someone explain to me where that's in the Bible, where there's an eclipse over the devil's kitchen in the Bible, and then that's when all the stuff happens. Someone show that to me in the Bible. That's retarded. That's like when my wife, she's like, what are you listening to? I'm like, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what everyone's all hyped up about because I got like 50 questions on it, and my guys are not reading about the commandments for what they're supposed to do at the feast. They're worried about the devil's kitchen. She's like, what the hell's the devil's kitchen? I'm like, I don't know. I need to find out what the devil's kitchen in is so that I can help them prioritize. Like, we're completely out of bounds. We're completely still lawless and fumbling. We have an F in our actual homework. We have an F in our actual homework, which is how do we're supposed to treat each other, how we're supposed to grow up, how we're supposed to love our brothers in a way that's, like, truly constructive. And to become grown-ups in the faith and not just be uh, whim to every wind of doctrine that blows across the face of the earth to tickle our ears that lust for entertainment. If your ears just need to be entertained and that's your version of keeping God's, you know, system, then man, I gosh darn it, we need to have a talk. So my wife heard the devil's kitchen. She just starts cracking up in the kitchen because she, she's in her kitchen. And she's like, what is this? I'm like, I know, it's it's really dumb. Just bear with me to finish another 20 minutes to go. We got to watch the video about Dev the Devil's Kitchen <clears throat> and how all this stuff is going to happen, man. Okay? Ridiculous. And then sob story S birds, shyst birds. Well, we'll see how it works out. The problem is this should be the case soon. If they, you know what I mean? Because like, but the problem is nobody logs or holds. There's no accountability. And our, my question is, are these guys actually just infiltrators? Who are these guys with their great prophecy? Like, look at the studios they have. Where did they buy that studio? Dude, do I look like I have a freaking studio here at my place? Rex, you're recording in your kitchen. Yeah, because I'm honest. Because my kitchen is what I can afford for a studio. Why? Because I'm not sponsored by a government agency. That's why. Infiltrators. I'm not going to bear false witness, but I will tell you, I mean, if you want to learn about infiltrators, go to, you know, go watch the filter series on the VSL level of Patreon. Okay? The filter series. There's, there's a whole video on infiltrators and the acronym there. Did you guys know that they'll find guys that are pinched and criminals who have a criminal records to go and be spokespersons for outfits like this because no one else with any kind of honor would want to do an outfit like that. What outfit are you talking about? Um, the same kind of outfits that run the UFO stuff. All the propaganda guys, it's their full-time job. It's like, okay, you are now the spokesperson for UFO technology or whatever. And the guy's like, you know, he got pinched for something and they're holding that over his head. Like, well, who the, who the hell with any kind of education would want to go off in that left field? Nobody. Where are they getting all their money from? Why do they have such professional help? Because it's a specifically ordained or uh, administered infiltration and it's a program designed to make everybody in the camp look completely bonkers. Because they're painting a narrative. 
I don't know what brother, I, I'm trying to remember what brother Saw called that deal, but he knows all about that. This is absolutely a thing that happens in the world where they'll like hire guys to just start saying a bunch of bullshit. I bet you over 50% of the big channels on YouTube having to do with Bible prophecy, over 50% are actually un, for real infiltrators because they get caught with like cocaine. They get caught um, with, they get caught doing fraud. You're telling me that a guy who's got a criminal record in fraud is now a Bible preacher on the computer? I've never had handcuffs in my life put on me except in training when I was learning how to put them on other people or get out of them or break them or get the locks loose that teach you how to escape from handcuffs. I've never been to jail. Is that not part of our filters anymore? There is no standard anymore, guys, unless you decide there is. And biblically, the men are called to do men things. You need to call these ass clowns out. Call them out. They're like, hey, man, you are a false prophet, all caps. Where's the locust invasion? Where's the New Madrid earthquake? Whatever they were saying, because there's all different combinations. Well, I know there's World War III has always been simmering since... They invented the atomic bomb. When did they make all the black and white movies where the guy's riding the hydrogen bomb with the cowboy hat? That was made before I was born. I've been on the brink of World War III forever. I know we're close. It literally could happen in 10 minutes from now, and it will happen at some point, I'm pretty sure. But I'm not going to come on here and tell you that God told me that this stuff is going down this year because this eclipse is the sign and this is, you know what I mean? Could World War III happen this year? Of course it could. Probably will. But do you understand the difference that God's, when, when we're talking about Yah, that specific Elohim, he's not bumbling through this like you see TV, TV preachers are just wrong all the time. And they're always doing cycles. And people have the, the memory of the goldfish. How do people follow these guys around anymore? One of my favorite teachers when I first came into the walk was a big education for me. He said a very specific day, Yom Teruah, this year, I think that was, uh, I forget what year that was. Like, So I waited for a few years because I watched his stuff, and for three or four years he kept talking about that. Yom Teruah, that year, will be the war, the global war. And so I'm like, oh, geez, probably better watch out. He seems like he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, so there was no war. Half his crew left like a month or two before he uh, before it actually happened. Like, ah, we're going to... No, we don't want to be with you, man. Like, you're not listening to us. We're pretty sure there's not going to be a war. And he's still going. And I I mean, like, I have a lot of compassion for that guy. He taught me a lot, but gosh darn it. He's one of those guys that fits that criteria of he spoke presumptuously. Is he bad? He points to Papa's laws and his commandments, but he spoke presumptuously in the role of self-appointed a prophet and when you are a self-appointed prophet and you're wrong and you find out that you are speaking presumptuously, we are told not to respect you anymore. You need to be quiet. So we need to call these guys out. So if they were wrong on this stuff, at the least, you have to call them out on it and be like, dude, maybe you should sit down and just read the Bible. Maybe you should figure out the law. Because these same guys who are experts on all this kind of stuff, you ask them like a kindergarten grade question or you just watch them and how they execute stuff in their lives. And they have like zero experience doing the commandments. All their stuff is knowledge about the commandments and then a lot of knowledge about really entertaining stuff. But they're not interested in what he told us to do, which is, well, that's an indicator, okay? Okay. So do not fear the false prophets who speak presumptuously. Do not respect those guys. Mark them down. Call them out. Have I said there's going to be World War III? Oh, yes, there is going to be World War III. Did I say World War III is going to happen on this uh, solar eclipse of 2028 and then that uh, uh, whatever asteroids come? Did I say that's happening? No. 
Is there an asteroid coming? You bet your ass there is. Do you see the difference? Why? How do I know that? Because I can open up the Bible and point to it. Boom. Right there. Wormwood. Wormwood. A, I mean, or a, a flaming mountain, whatever that means, will be thrown at the earth. I can point to Daniel. Is that chapter 2? Where a big rock comes out of the sky and smashes the world empires? I'll point to that. But that's not me coming up with stuff. That's just me simply reading Papa's word. When I read about the Gog Magog War and talk about that, that's not Rex coming up with the World War III prophecy out of my butt. And that it's going to start on Tuesday, you know, March whatever, 2027 or whatever. Like, there is a huge difference there. I'm not saying that CERN is, CERN is absolutely a bunch of bad guys. Of course they are. Are they trying to get a window to devil to say hello? Probably. Is the devil's kitchen a prophetic event? <sighs> Dude, I don't know. It's just, you know what I mean? Are there going to be the locust-like like things? Of course. He wrote something to the effect of locust-like things stinging people. Whatever that means, I don't know what that means. But I bet you that whatever that means, that's going to happen. Red heifers, is that part of the process? Yes. Are the red heifers? Yes. Are they going to probably do them? I bet they will. But I'm not going to tell you it's October 21st, 1844, or whatever the date was. I can't remember. Because that would make me into a fool. I'd be a liar, a time waster. I would be doing it to bolster my ego, and I'd be slightly retorted. Okay? So execute your filters, guys. You learned about the filters in the VSL level in Patreon. Execute those. Hold these guys' feet to the fire with that Rexel.